I'm just going to live. And we're live. But it's finally here. And we're live now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Please, please join us on uh, Things I Never Said Film Instagram or Facebook. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Sorry, guys. Uh, blah, 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 blah. There's a lot of things <laughs> there's 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 happening. Okay. <laughs> so. okay. Yeah. Okay. Is it working? Um, we still have a lot of people with different people joining us. Yeah. And, um, it's not. Do you see it? I got a notification that you guys started a live video. If that's anything. <laughs> Do you not see us? That's what I was like. Uh oh. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's okay. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Can you guys comment if you. Well, somebody commented on me, so I'm sure. Yay! Okay. So was I, and I ate a lot already. <laughs> okay. Oh my god, this is cool. Um, oh, are you? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh, responses? Oh, okay. Responses. I know. <laughs> I'm, I'm not too. Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, thanks for joining us today. So, uh, oh my gosh, I don't even know how long this live stream will be. Maybe about an hour or so. So, the first half, we're actually going to um, answer some of your guys' questions from last time that we didn't even get to. Uh, so, I have like a list right here. That uh, that I have, so uh, we'll be ask we'll, we'll be asking those, and then for the second half, we'll actually be teaching you guys how to find help. All right. So uh, first off, let's introduce everyone. We have Tashi. Hi, I'm Taishi. <laughs> how are you guys? <laughs> oh, did I pronounce it wrong? Is it Taishi? Taishi. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, Taishi. <laughs> uh, I'm Julia, uh, and then we have oh my gosh, is it Marie. Mariel. Mariel, I'm sorry. It's <laughs> okay. Mariel and Nolan joining yep. us today. These are two professional uh, uh, mental health specialist people. people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> I mean, hey, look, we're, we're just trying to keep it casual right now. We're just trying to keep it casual because it's, 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 it's nothing big. Something yeah. we're, we're good. We're good. Tacos. Yeah, we're doing Taco mukbang really styles. Good. We're yes. having tacos. <laughs> and so, uh, all right, so first, uh, we're going to actually start off with mm -hmm. a question of how do I know if I have mental health issues, or am I just the type of person? I think that's a really good question. I think that's the question that everybody thinks at first, you know? Because uh -huh. I think, you know, life is stressful as it is. Life, um, you know, gives you a lot of anxiety. Things give you anxiety, and that's really normal. And so I think the, I, the, the question is, when is it normal, and when is it not normal? Um, when is it problematic? When is it time to seek help? And I think it's really important to remember that um, you're not just, you know, well and then you're sick. It's not this or that. It's a spectrum. And sometimes you're doing really well. Sometimes you're doing less well, but still good. Sometimes you're in the middle. Sometimes you're on the other end. And it's important to remember that that'll shift. And that's very normal. And it's also important to remember that yes life is challenging sometimes and you know it's stressful and anxiety uh, you know it causes anxiety but when it becomes problematic um, that is up to you to decide you know typically we say if it starts interfering with your health you know um, maybe you're starting to get sick more maybe you're not sleeping well maybe um, anxiety. yeah sadness, sadness. Mm -hmm. and your um, relationships are deteriorating. Maybe you're snapping more at people. Maybe you're isolating yourself, mm -hmm. and you don't want to be around people. So it's a number of things that is really hard, you know, to probably identify if you're not used to kind of looking at yourself and paying attention to what you're doing. And that's why we talk a lot about, like, mindfulness, yeah. right? What do, you, what do you guys think? Well, no, because, like, um, in college, I felt like I had a pretty hard time because at that time when I graduated high school, at least from the area that I'm at, it was a very like academically competitive school. So if you didn't get into UC, then like you're dumb. So if you go to Cal State or like community college, you're dumb, right? So with that type of expectation and that mentality, because um, I went to Cal State and so I, I hated it in my first year. Like I absolutely hated it, everything about it. Um, and I just felt like I was a huge failure. 
And I remember I was being sad for a really long time. I mean, I never went to go check in with anyone to see. I just thought, yeah, like how this question was, was like, yeah, am I just that type of person that maybe I was a little too sensitive or maybe, you know, I'm just one of those people that are complaining for no reason, right? So um, that makes a lot of sense because I think in college I had a lot of anxiety because I just didn't want to fail at school mm -hmm. and um, I wanted to do well, but then I just felt like there wasn't enough time in the day. <laughs> so, I mean, that totally makes sense. That totally makes sense. I wish I knew at the time. I mean, maybe towards the end of college, I kind of started getting my shit together. I mean, sorry, my act together. Um, sorry, we're, we're trying to keep PG. That was my bad. We're trying to keep PG. Uh, but yeah, we're trying to um, keep, and, yeah, keep things together. So, yeah, that, that's very interesting. Yeah, and I, I felt like I couldn't really connect with anyone uh, because I was so in my own world and in my own head that, um, you know, I, I just felt like I was a burden to a lot of people, yeah. And I think a lot of a lot of us go through that, especially with the um, idea about going into, let's say, for school, for example. Um, especially in our community, we have to reach a certain level, you know what I mean, or else we may be labeled as not smart, mm -hmm. or there might be something wrong with us, or something like that, you know. Um, so anytime that you feel like an overwhelming, um, you know, overwhelming feeling of anxiety, or just for some reason your your mood is off, you know, check in with yourself. Have like a self-check in. It's like, hey, is this normal? You know, and if it's not, and if it continues to happen, it continues to happen periodically and um and consistently, then it might be a good idea to check in with um, maybe a, a you know like a therapist or seek help. I know campuses themselves have like mental health professionals on staff um, that can help you guide guide you through um, whatever you're going through for that moment. And um you know, like if it if it continues to happen, maybe seek more professional help. Go to your, go to a doctor or psychiatrist. See if there there might be a diagnosis or something, and maybe get some you know whatever something that you that could help you. Um, you know, yeah, that's crazy. I mean, because towards the end of college, what I ended up doing was I started talking to myself to get to know myself more. Mm -hmm. Because I would have sit downs where I would just be like, oh. Man, you're like, Hey man, these tacos are delicious. Here, right? Really, guys. No shame in these tacos. My eggs. These eggs are delicious. These eggs are delicious. Sponsored by egg. <laughs> but yeah. Thank you. Basically, I just sat down and I just went to my room. And I remember I was like, okay, let me ask you. <laughs> Hey, look, eggs are a great source of protein. Yeah. All right. All eggs, right. you should sponsor us. We're okay. serious. We're serious. <laughs> it, it, it helps. It helps with our health, right? We, yeah. we live a healthy life. Okay. But yeah, I mean, I just ended up talking to myself in a room, and like a few questions that I had for myself is, do you like yourself? Why don't you like yourself? Okay, what are things that you would like to change about yourself? And it was just really kind of general, but then it really just dug in deep where it just was like I was stabbing myself in my own heart because it was just things I wasn't really necessarily ready to confront, but I had to in order to feel better. But when you ask those questions, what yeah. kind of what kind of answers did you give yourself? Oh my god. Um so one of them was um when you okay. said and when you asked yourself, do you like yourself? What did you I said no, and the reasons are because I'm sad. Uh, I feel like a failure, and I feel like I don't fit in. And then um, other parts of it is, do I like the way that I look? And then it'd be like, no. And it's like, okay, so what is it that you can do to make you feel confident and to actually like the way that you look? And at that time, I just felt like, I was super inactive, and so I felt really gross, <laughs> and, um, and I wanted to lose some weight. And so I was like, okay, so what, what are the steps that I can do in order to achieve what I want that would probably be make me happy? And so I was like, okay, go to the gym more often, sign up for classes that make me active, um, anything of that sort, because I realized that I can't necessarily complain about the way that I look if I don't do anything about it. So if I just feel, if I feel like it's like, oh, I just feel so bloated today, or I feel like I'm really like, like a lot bigger than I usually am, right? It's kind of like, those are things that I'm in charge of. I'm in charge of what I eat. I'm in charge of what I do with my body. So I just felt like 
I couldn't be one of those people that be like, well, it's easy for you because you do this. It's more of like, well, I didn't even give myself the chance to even try to make that happen. But what about in situations where you don't have control? Like, let's say you have some kind of, you know, um, you know, medical illness and you're on medication or something that makes you bigger. Right, right. Then you ought to be, and that happens for a lot of people on steroids. Like, what do you do for things that you can't control? So, um, I actually have a couple of friends that are actually like that too, and I feel like they opened up my eyes a lot. Um, I can't necessarily speak for them on, on their behalf, but what I know from my own personal experiences is just that I've always felt like that my legs were always big, and that um, no matter what I did, they just never went any smaller. And, or at least to the to the shape or the size that I want. And so over time, it was just more of me accepting the fact mm. that uh, these are my legs and that um, if there is something that I don't like about it, what I could do is that I could go under plastic surgery and do something with it, or I can accept the fact that, yeah, again, these are my legs and that I should start loving them instead of hating them because it's like, well, that's just a part of who you are as a person. But again, to, to each their own. Uh, but yeah, like I, I think for those who can't help those circumstances, um, yeah, I feel like it's, it's just a matter of having self-love. But again, I, I don't know how everyone thinks, but it's just either self-love or, um, you know, I think I read for people who have like hypothyroidism, um, there are different ways where you can try to lose weight, where like if you take your pill um, right before you go to sleep or something, or maybe the dosage isn't right. Like it, there's so many factors in it, but like it's possible, it's doable. So it's like to do research to see if it's doable, and if it's not, then figure out a way that would make you happy, like a solution that would make you happy. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. For me, I, I used to be that boy, Wow. So like uh, yeah, <laughs> I was a boy. So like uh, <laughs> I was like uh, during high school, I don't like myself, and uh, but first I don't like myself. But I'm trying to looking for like uh, for some like uh, uh, some enjoy thing mm -hmm. so i found that like, uh soccer okay so and i that was really fun for me so mm -hmm. i play i think i play maybe 10 years and i get this right now <laughs> <laughs> so like uh i thought like i never imagined like uh i changed like this but i feel like uh something you enjoy thing it doesn't matter for like a chubby thing when I, when I was during high school, I was chubby, but I I was really fun for playing soccer. So so when I enjoyed soccer, I don't care if I was fatty or something like that. So yeah. I think it's a one way to find something like uh, you enjoy yeah. or you know, fun thing. Yeah. I, like. I think you guys said two very important things and mm -hmm. one was acceptance yeah you know what i mean so some things that you can't control mm -hmm. accepting the fact and learning how to love them is a great way is a great tool to be able to, to love yourself or yeah. to go into a positive direction one of the things that helped me with mm -hmm. that is lifting weights and knowing that my legs are strong i'm like okay because you're strong legs we're cool yeah like, <laughs> like totally. it's only cool that i'm like, <laughs> this size like, i like it like i'm totally happy with yeah. Like that's one of the things that actually made me I guess I started thinking of reasons of like what what I can like about myself. Right. Yeah. And seeing the positive aspect of yourself, you know yeah. what I mean? And um somebody also said that you can also walk and you know, you don't have to go to the gym, you don't have to mm -hmm. do very strenuous things. Personally I love to walk. I love to walk around in my neighborhood. Um I like to play with my cat and he's very, very uh George. George, my our, <laughs> our cat George. He's very he's large and we like Wrestle. It's it's cute. Don't yeah, think it's weird. It's not oh, weird. I have two cats. <laughs> That's I have two cats. True. And um, so there's a lot of things that you can do. And personally, I love to do yoga. You can do yoga in the studio or at home. Yeah. Um. But yeah. So going back, you talked about acceptance, and then and the then second piece would be um with his piece. Um, he had mentioned um something very important is find something that you enjoy, which is which mm -hmm. is basically you know self care. You know what I mean? Find something that you love to do. You know what I mean? Something that you love to do. Like, let's say 
let's say you, you're dealing with a weight issue and you feel a little bit down, you know, get, get into a sport that you love to do, you know, or something that, that, that brings you joy or brings you happiness, you know what I mean? Um, try to find a fellowship that you can that you can be like, hey, you know, let's go hiking or let's go running, you know what I mean? And um, find joy not in, in other people too, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because you know we weren't we weren't you know like isolation is a huge is a um, a huge symptom of of an underlying disease, you know what I mean? So if you find yourself isolating, it's probably something inside telling you, hey, you know, let's let's go do something, let's go find some friends, you know what I mean? Let's go enjoy life. This you know the sun is sun is shining you know, let's go you know um be of service or something like that and i think just kind of wrapping up a lot of the things that have been said so a lot of themes were mindfulness checking in you know acceptance mm-hmm. and doing things that you love and i think you know once you get on that path it becomes more clear you know how to become happier but i think what a lot of people struggle with is how do you even start Right, like, how do you learn to accept yourself? Because acceptance is easier said than done, right? Hell um, yeah! Like, how do you like? Yes, I love like all my weird parts. You know, my weird parts. You know, and how do you how do you do that? And I think you know it really starts with exactly what you said is checking in and mindfulness, and you know, just I think we have to learn to be aware of when something riles us up in any kind of emotion, whether it's a good emotion, whether it's a bad emotion. You know, and I think a lot of times things happen to us and we're so busy in our day that we don't like take a step back and acknowledge, oh, that made me feel good. Mm-hmm. Or, oh, that made me feel bad. Why did that make me feel good? Why did that make me feel bad? Mm-hmm. And when you're not examining how you feel about things, you're really losing connection between, you know, your external world and your internal world. And you have to be very connected in that way. If you want to be able to communicate with that world, you know, from within to the external. Right. So just like, um, you know, just give me an example a little bit about my story, you know what I mean? Like I, you know what I mean? Like I, um, I'm three years clean and sober, right? So in my, in my disease, you know what I mean? I was, um, I was isolating a lot. And a lot of that was because of fear. I was afraid of you, I was afraid of you, mm. I was afraid of you. I didn't know how to have healthy relationships. I was, I was riddled with anxiety, you know what I mean, I, I had bouts of depression, um, you know, a lot of that stuff, and then that happened for like, um, you know, I was in my active addiction for over 14 years, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? So one, one question that you asked was, um, how do I accept other people, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like, you know, like I can't really accept or find things that, that I like in you or that's similar to me if I don't even really know myself, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Especially if I'm, tr- if I'm acting in fear being by myself, you know, without anybody else around, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? So what, if, even if you're, let's say like you're, you're not dealing with, um, with addiction, maybe you're dealing with overeating or, or some, uh, some other type of, you know, like just like depression or something like that. And you don't want to go outside or whatever, you know what I mean? Like it's, um, it's one of those things where it's like, okay, you know, like I'm isolating, you know, that's not healthy. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? There's got, there are people like like me somewhere you know what i mean let me reach out let me acknowledge and be mindful of what's going on with me mm-hmm. and then reach out for help you know what i mean it's um it, it takes a little bit of bravery to get to that point because once you're in that mode where you're just like i want to be by myself i don't want anybody to know where i'm at i don't want you know to be i don't want to be involved in the community i don't want to do be of service i don't want to do anything then there there's a huge issue so then, so then with that in mind then moving on um, for those of that, for those of you out there that have anxiety and depression, they ask like, how do you avoid feeling like you're a burden, and like, how do you relieve that stress that you're a burden, and like, um, how can you start trusting yourself and believing in yourself, and and with other people too. Right. Yeah. So I, I guess being okay. So like, feeling. I know I do a lot. Yeah. Right? yeah, yeah. <laughs> feeling, feeling, feeling like you're a burden is, is kind of like a preconceived notion. You know what I mean? It's like, I think that you think that I'm a burden. You know what I mean? And let's say that may or may not be true. Let's say it's true, right? You think I'm a burden. That's probably not a healthy relationship. Whoever that person is that thinks sees you as a burden is probably not healthy for you. I mean, let's take a step back because, okay. you know, if let's say you are under the care of your parents and your parents are spending a lot of resources, whether it's time, money, whatever, to try to help you get better, you know, you could be perceived as a financial burden, 
but yet maybe it's something that your parents are still willing to do, you know, or um, maybe not your parents, your friends, you know, maybe they are willing to, you know, pay attention to when you're acting weird or when things are, you know, even when let's say you're broke and your friends are like, you know what, like come, like I'll buy you like a drink or, you know, like, I don't know, boba or something, you know, I think, I think places sponsor us, please. <laughs> um, but you know, and, and so, I mean, sure you could see where it's like, Oh, this person is spending money on me this person is spending their time on me, or maybe they took notes for me mm -hmm. when I was not able to go to class or something. Yeah. And that could be perceived as a burden. But I think what we have to remember is exactly what you said is our preconceived notion of what the other person feels right. because maybe, yeah, maybe you are a burden in a sense that you have taken up some of some other person's resources, but this person is willing to do it because they care about you mm -hmm. and they see the value in helping you and as you as a person in their life. You know, a recent discovery of mine is that never assume <laughs> like nowadays, like with your relationships and your friendships, never assume, always ask to confirm. Because I think um, for me, I built up a lot of anxiety by just assuming so many different types of scenarios in my head that I didn't even know which one was the correct scenario until the moment that I asked. And then when I did, I got my answer and all the other things I was worried about just went away. So I feel like the safest thing and the hardest thing to kind of start implementing is to never assume anything. Mm. Yeah. Always ask to confirm. And I think it takes a lot of bravery to ask. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. when you're thinking, like, wow, this person isn't talking to me. Right. Or did I do something? And it turns out that they were just, like, sick and they had the flu for, like, five days or, or something, you know. Or maybe right. it was a small little tip that, like, they think you said or did something or you yeah. thought, you know. And it was just very, very minor. And you're so embarrassed to right. confront it that if you just build up all the stress that was really out of nothing. Or something very small very true and um i still deal with like confrontation issues just because i'm just so scared and i just hate confrontation in general but i'm slowly trying to get over that but the more that i do it it's not as scary as i built it up to be so have confidence in yourself right? like, don't assume all right and don't be afraid of confrontation honestly just ask me like hey sorry if i said something bad the other day uh can we talk about it you know like just even opening up and if the other person decides not to engage with you then you kind of already have your answer you're like well I fucked up uh, I learned my lesson oh I'm sorry I'm sorry oh I, uh, thank you. Oh, um, I, uh, I messed up uh, sorry I messed up uh, so now I learned my lesson now I can reflect back on what I did what I said, and be better for the next person in my life yeah 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 that's all you can do that's all you can hope for yes. is do your best and when you realize your best was not enough mm -hmm. try to find a way to learn from that mm -hmm. you know and whatever learning from that looks like means to you and only you can define what that looks like by the way your stockings are really they're good. really good. <laughs> i'm really glad that i took them before it started you know, <laughs> i would have just been like nom nom nom, nom. Yeah. It's so good you ate all yours before we i did before. because i didn't want everybody to see that's why a lot happening, you know. I need to like focus. There's more. Thank you. <laughs> There's also more eggs. Oh, that's right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> They're gonna be gone. <laughs> so I kind of want to go back and touch upon something uh, that you, Mar uh, Mario, sorry, yeah. have uh, mentioned earlier about how sometimes the circumstances, like you. Like you're 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 stuck in them, and there's not much that you can do about it, right? Mm -hmm. And so, some people are asking, you know, like how do you start recovering from something that was taken away from you, like as like your childhood experience mm -hmm. was taken away from you, or like the trauma that you received. Like, how do you actually start to like actually start being healthy or on the mm -hmm. way to be healthy? So, I mean, serious injury is really hard to get over. I mean, if you, you know, um, I, I was talking to um, my partner's class about trauma, and we were talking about the difference between, you know, what is physical trauma versus, you know, mental, psychological trauma. If you break a leg, mm -hmm. do you just walk on it and hope it heals? 
Mm -hmm. um, you know, it depends on how bad it is. Maybe it's just a minor fracture and you just kind of need it to be wrapped and secured. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it breaks completely and you need to, you know, put in a nail or a screw or some kind of implant to keep it together. Mm -hmm. And then you're in a cast and also, you know, what do you do for that? So we treat that, right? We treat it because if it doesn't heal right, then it causes more problems later. And that's the same thing for psychological trauma, mm -hmm. right? Is you have, you have to find a way to treat that. And I think, you know, there are things that we can learn how to do, yeah. you know, and learn how to cope in ways that are healthy or healthier. You know, there are management ways. Because I think with a lot of traumas, it, it's, never, it's never erased from your system. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't just get a deep cut and, you know, you're scarless. You develop that scar, like that mark is on you for the rest of your life and over time it'll fade, yeah. but it's there and it's not going away. And that's the same thing psychologically, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's never gonna really go away. Mm -hmm. It just fades with time, but you have to heal it and nurture it and treat it properly. So then like for those of, for those of you out there um, who have experienced bad memories, right? Um, mm -hmm. How do you prevent those bad memories from affecting your daily life? Like, like, for example, like, let's say you got cheated on, right? And then now every relationship that you get into, you have that fear of that other person cheating on you. Or either that, it's a reverse effect where you're like, you now become a playboy, playgirl, right? And you just are not committed to anybody. Like, how do you, how do you work out? I'm sorry. Is that weird? No, see, because like, I can't comment on that. I wanted to say something different, but I felt like playboy and playgirl was the most <laughs> and I was paid well, to play your hair degree. Yeah. <laughs> Does anybody uh, still say that? <laughs> I no. So I was just going to say, okay, so like in regards to um, what Mariel was saying, she was saying, you know, I mean, as far as like treating, treating like the broken leg or whatever. Yeah. But, you know, a lot, of, a lot of times it's also not just the broken leg, but it's like how it was broken. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? When it affects you and it lingers and it lingers and it lingers. So I don't know if you've watched it, if you've ever watched like Six Hundred Pound Life. Oh, okay. I, I see trailers of it. Okay, so, um, you know, it's one of our favorite shows, you know, my husband and I. But, you know, so, like, what, what's, what's crazy about this show um, is that, like, okay, so, um, when you see, see these people, whether it's overeating, right, or whether it's um, substance use or whatnot, a lot of them say, well, you know, like, you know, like, um, they start bringing up when the doctor asks them, hey, so, like, how did you get this, this big, or why are you using drugs, or what is... It's always because like, um, not always, but some, a lot of the time it's like, you know, like I was, I was molested when I was younger, you know what I mean? I was, I was raped when I was a child, you know what I mean? I got beat by my family, my, yeah. parent, my parents were mentally abusive, physically abusive, you know what I mean? So it's, um, and all of that stuff brings, brings shame, like onset of shame, mm -hmm. right? And it, as, if the shame is not um, addressed um, in the later years, what I find is that, um, that they'll never be able to heal from whatever trauma that they had. You know what I mean? And a lot of that stuff is, is ingrained in them as a core belief. So they don't, re they don't even realize that like, this, the stuff that they, they, they've forgotten is what's affecting them today. Mm -hmm. So like, let's say that you're like, either obsessing or you're, you have an addictive behavior or you're, you have a, a high level of anxiety, mm -hmm. whether it's in a relationship or making choices or doing or having or things of that nature. It's always to see what what in your past has caused you the most shame, mm -hmm. and then seek professional help, and then ask ask for that person or work with that work with that professional professional to help you to address that address that shame. Mm -hmm. um, because that shame can turn into anger, it can turn into depression. If you don't know how to cope, it can turn into using substances, alcohol, you know, drugs. You know, what I mean, mm -hmm. food. You know, what I mean, and you know, like the longer it progresses, the worse it gets. And you see a lot of people who are on the streets who have never been able to address that shame. But and I think, sorry, sorry. Go ahead. I think even if, you know, it's taking you a long time to mm -hmm. learn how to address that shame and to even just accept that, wow, this was a problem. Mm -hmm. I mean, even if that happens way down the line, that's okay. That's fine. Right. Because you see it now and you can do something about it now. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important that, you know, in our search, for mindfulness and improving whatever aspects of our lives that we are also very forgiving of ourselves, that we forgive ourselves for the mistakes that we made, mm -hmm. that we realize like, okay, that was bad. I didn't, I shouldn't have done that. That was a mistake or I wish things had gone differently, but okay, 
that's the end of it and let's learn from it, let's move on. Because it's so easy to just keep blaming yourself. Yeah. You know, it's just yeah. like, wow, this happened to me and then I did this, gosh, I'm such a loser. Like, gonna I'm, never gonna get, <laughs> I'm never gonna get, I'm never gonna get that. But you know, yeah, when some people get that, right? Heart. Like, it's so easy to get yeah. caught up and just continue to beat yourself up because you are just never, you never forgive yourself. And mm -hmm. if you can never forgive yourself from what you've done, how can you truly grow? Right. Right. Because you have to confront those difficult parts of yourself, the parts of yourself that you are not, that you don't like, mm -hmm. you know, the parts of the, yourself that you wish were different. Okay. Well, you have to look at yourself and that's really hard, mm -hmm. right? It's really hard to look at yourself. You? Yeah. To oh, look yeah. at yourself critically and just be like, Hmm. Okay. Yeah. It does happen. So then what about in the situation where um, you've gone to that point where you feel like you were truly alone and that you've separated yourself from other people and that, you know, no matter how much they say like, oh, no, I'm here for you. Um, you know, they try to comfort you. I mean, you know, when you feel alone, you feel alone. Right. So for those of for those out there that do feel alone, like how what's a good way to cope with that? You know, like the fact that they've separated themselves for so long and for like so much, I guess, right? So yeah, what what do you think would be a good solution for that? Well, from what I what I've known, you can you can isolate yourself mm -hmm. in a in a room full of a hundred people. You know what I mean? Okay. When you're when you're when you're alone and you you know that you've pulled yourself from society in that respect. You know what I mean? And you know that you're whatever reason for every reason why that you you've done that. Um, it's probably a good idea to seek professional help mm. um, and to try to find a community or a fellowship that you cling to mm. to help ease you in back into society. Mm. You know, because I mean? it's community, a, like at the club or like whatever you whatever you that finds that you find um, is um, interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it could be a club. It could be you know. It could be a music group. A music well, you group. met through um, a, 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 the South Coast Corral, who's plugged this. <laughs> um, you know, so we sing together. Um, you know, I met my partner through a teaching um, community. We both, he still teaches, I used to be a teacher. Um, you know, just kind of where, meet people, you can meet people um, at events and places where you like to be and you like to contribute to that community because then, you know, you have something that you find valuable that that person also finds valuable because <laughs> You are both there for the same reason. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And that's a way to at least bridge one connection. Mm -hmm. And you'll never know what other kind of connections you'll make because I've met so many wonderful people through, you know, SEC or other communities or other organizations that I've joined just, mm -hmm. you know, from being around. I mean, that makes so much sense. That just finally clicked in my head because um, in high school, I used to do cross country, which is basically distance running. And um, I just remember... Um, I learned the value of sportsmanship because um, I was I would be running and my teammates who um, weren't competing yet they'll be on the sidelines and they'll be cheering me on right and I just remember I was such a negative Nancy right so in my head I was like yeah 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 you're just saying that just so that you can look good right to look nice right but then over time that sportsmanship just gets really infectious and mm -hmm. you just can't help but join in on that and like wanting people to do really well like. I think their persistence in cheering me on consistently, um, despite the fact that it didn't translate well into my head, kind of made me start to think differently and maybe be like, okay, why are they cheering so hard? You know, it's like, what is like, what is their ulterior motive, right? But then like, when you find that they're genuine to be like, yeah, you can do it. Like, just, just go for like another mile. Like you're almost done, right? Just hearing those words of encouragement, you start to think, okay, well, they're not as malicious as I thought. And they're genuinely here to really support me. Mm -hmm. And I think slowly I started to gain trust within my teammates that like they're not competing against me, they're competing with me. Yeah. Oh yeah. So that totally clicked what That's you just great. said. Oh yeah. my God. <laughs> <Did you know? laughs> That's the idea about having a fellowship because it's one person supporting or helping another person. Yeah. And then what more of what more, you know, what what a great, you know, and loving thing as a sense of community. You know, being able to be a part of that, mm. you know what I mean? Being a part of this, you know, this whole thing right here that we're doing right here for um, Things I Never Said is a sense of community, a sense of love. It's a, it's a call to, um, to help another person out. 
you know what I mean? Um, and that's what it's about. Now, if you can find, if you can find that in yourself and how you could do that in yourself, whether you're dealing with, and, and I truly believe this, whether you're dealing with any type of like depression, anxiety, you know, substance use, whatever, if you can find that fellowship in that community and that love, you're going to be in a way better place. You're going to learn how to cope way better. You know what I mean? You're going to, um, you know, have a heightened level of self-confidence, um, mm -hmm. self-love, because you're giving love and you're showing that you, you, you know, you trust other people and then in, internally you're going to start growing and becoming a person that you, you've always knew that you could be, you know what I mean? Cause I've seen both sides of the spectrum. I've seen that I've been in a place where it's just like, I'm not doing anything. I'm just going to be smoking dope in the closet and that's it. <laughs> you know what I mean? To like, okay, all right. Now I'm like totally a service and I love everybody. And I'm like giving hugs, you know, before I never knew how to give a hug. Literally I'd be like, that's good enough, you know what I mean? There, there. Yeah, and then now, like, I like that's all I want to do is like give people a hug. I know it's kind of sound weird, you know what I mean? But that's what I do. You know what I mean? He's very much a hugger. I'm yeah. kind of like, oh, whoa, whoa. whoa. Even I'm like, even I'm a little bit of surprised by it because it was it was totally left field. When they talk about spectrum, I was like, on this side, you know what I mean? And now, like, I feel like, you know, like I'm I'm on this direction. But you know, I couldn't I couldn't be more grateful for that. You know what I mean? For yeah. My hometown is Okinawa, you know, it's a Japanese island. Mm -hmm. And I want to- I heard it was the best island. It's best. Wow. Wow. Okinawa you know, is best. Yeah. <laughs> I, heard, I heard people live longer on that island because they're a lot happier. Oh, uh, yes. Food is fresh also and mm -hmm. lifestyle is active. There's many old people. Facts. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so I went to university for uh, Tokyo. So I'm, I was alone there. So first day I, I was too shy, mm -hmm. so I can like uh, talk to another person because, like, uh, I felt like uh, I'm in the county side people. So it's Tokyo is a really like a city, right? I I, I don't have like a confidence, and uh, I I'm I can't like I'm really afraid to like talk talk mm -hmm. to another people, and so first year I don't have a friend, so. And I, all day, so I take class alone, and I eat lunch alone, and I take class alone, and I go back to home, oh, and I no. eat alone. Oh, oh no! Such a horrible thing. But I, I want to try to like uh, change myself, so I went to class, and then um, it was so, so afraid. Uh, it's, here, mm -hmm. but I talked to like uh, uh, some people. Hey, I told you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm Taishi, by the way. Yeah. And I start like uh, make friends. Mm -hmm. And so second grade, I have uh, many friends, and I get community circle, like class, and we hang out a lot. So it was totally different like time for me. It's uh, that alone is so sad and like uh, it's i don't have confidence mm -hmm. but hang out with friends and meet other like uh new friends mm -hmm. it's getting more energy and it was you it, it was so scary but it's 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 a real price for do that thing yeah. i think yeah oh that's good yeah that's good <laughs> put, put yourself out there yeah and you took oh, that risk of yeah. being vulnerable to yeah, yeah. let people into your life mm -hmm. yeah I'm gonna say it again. With vulnerability comes strength. Yeah. So that's yeah. that's key. All know? right. So then, what about in this scenario? Because this is also another question that we've been mm -hmm. asked. Where it's like, even though logically in your head you know that eventually you're gonna be okay, but in the moment of the now, like your heart is in pain, your emotions are in pain. So like, mm -hmm. how do you deal with what's happening now, despite the fact that logically you're telling yourself that you're gonna be okay in the end? Mm -hmm. I think feel like that sends a lot of mixed signals. <laughs> yeah, that's that's that one's really hard. And something that, that personally helps for me, and I know it helps a lot for people, is a form of meditation and like breathing exercises. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, a lot of times breathing exercises can do well even for anxiety attacks, panic attacks, biochemically. Mm -hmm. There's evidence that it works, you know, on a physiological level, and it has to do with you know, carbon dioxide and bicarbonate in your bloodstream and how you're exhaling and ventilating. But, um, you know, I do a lot of meditation and 
and yoga and let me explain how that works for me is you know when you're meditating or when you're doing yoga and you're being still mm -hmm. and you're holding a very uncomfortable pose and you're breathing slowly like still maintaining posture and being strong it's really hard because there are a lot of times when i feel like i'm just gonna let myself collapse like i'm really tired of doing this i'm tired of you know holding a warrior two or maybe doing i don't know there's so many poses right so or even just if you're doing like a, a plank, right? You're holding a plank and you're just telling yourself, okay, this is gonna end. Mm -hmm. And you have to be, you have to learn how to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. And that was probably the biggest and most important lessons that I learned is you learn to be strong because you learn how to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And that is something that you have to practice. Mm -hmm. yeah. You don't just become strong, yeah. right? You don't just because you know you don't just have gains overnight yeah. you know you have to build that you have to practice it it's mental it's physical you know even when you're working out like that's a that's also a mental practice mm -hmm. you know and so you have to like when you start like being aware again mindful of like your your emotions your mind your body what's happening you know when you know what's going on with yourself you're able to start training that better and it's practice it's a mm -hmm. regimen it doesn't come overnight you're not gonna it's not a linear trajectory you're not just gonna get better all the time it's gonna go up and down mm -hmm. yeah. and that's okay and that's normal yeah i mean i totally agree with that because i feel like in college i was such a sad sap that um i did have my ups and my downs and i think for the longest time i would say maybe even like four years of my college career like four out of five years where I just felt really lost and secluded and alone and um, just kind of dealing with that type of, um, I guess, emotion and just kind of the pain of not liking yourself for the longest time. Um, I, I have kind of, yeah, like, like you see, you kind of get used to it for like, you get used to being uncomfortable. Um, and I, and like, yeah, like you said, it's not going to, overcome overnight because I felt like I started coming out of it after four years. <laughs> so it's, it's like, I mean, everybody works differently. And I just feel like, you know, when, if you were to put an expectation of, well, by tomorrow I should be feeling happy, uh, that just puts too much pressure mm -hmm. on that. And I feel like you take as long as you need mm -hmm. to just be sad. Like, honestly, I feel like, I mean, I've cried, I got angry, you know, like there are days where I just don't want to do anything. And then there are days where I'm just like, whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and it's just like, there's nothing wrong to express something like that. It's just what you're feeling. And you need that time for it to settle into your head to process that like, Hey, this is what's happening to you right now. Mm -hmm. And then when you're ready, uh, you know, like we're, we're, we're all here together as one whole body, right. To, to face this. Mm -hmm. This obstacle, right? And it's like, but you face it on your own time, not mm -hmm. anyone else's time. Mm -hmm. And if and you have friends that would be like, well, you need to get over it real soon. Like, oh, okay, I was about to cuss, but forget those <laughs> friends. <laughs> forget those friends because, <laughs> because yeah, because like um, they're they're not really your friends because they're not looking out for your well being. They just they just feel like that you might be a sore to their own energy, and that just sucks for them to kind of place that expectation on you. Mm -hmm. I think also there are times like, you know, one of my best friends, we had a really bad breakup um, mm -hmm. many, many, many years ago. And, you know, he was, he, he had a hard time and he basically disappeared for a while. And I yeah, pulled him out and I was like, you know what? No, you're getting out of here. Right. Like, and sometimes, you know, you have, first of all, you have to know this relationship really well. Right. So you can't just do that with like random, you know, right. like not close friends. You gotta have that rapport. So the rapport. So my, mm -hmm. my, you know, my best friend and I, like we, we knew each other well enough where I felt comfortable. And I was like, okay, I gave you your time to sit in your tub, you know, yeah. <laughs> every day. And yeah. it's, it's time to get out, dude. Like, you know, like, it's time to I will agree. Like, I feel like if there's some sort of compromise, I guess what I'm trying right. to talk in the more extreme version of it is exactly. if your friends would be like, hey, get over it, do yeah. that. Like it's done with, right? Like right. just you, like you need to be happy now. Those are the things, yeah. those are the moments where I said, those aren't good people for you. Right. But if there are people be like, hey, look, I know you're feeling bad and you're feeling terrible right now, but mm. I just want to say you're better than that person and forget that person. You know, like that yeah. person is terrible for you. 
like, I mean, one day, like, no, I would like for you to be, get over them, right? But I know that you're going through something now. Like, yeah. I feel like that's a lot better than be like, hey, get over it and be happy tomorrow. Yeah. Like, it's just it's completely different. And I think it's really personal when people say, like, well, I'm over it. Why aren't you over it? Yeah. And that is, you know, that's, that's really, you know, kind of still blaming and victim blaming and shaming people when you really, you know, like, you're, what you're going through is different from somebody else's, even if you know them really well, like you don't know what's going on. You don't know every aspect of your life. You only see what you see. Yeah. And we have to be very careful to, to not really have those expectations on others. Like let them do it on their own time. And I think, you know, if you want to have goals, maybe set small goals, you know, and maybe instead of, you know, I spend every day, you know, alone, you know, to like, I want to go out every single day all the time. You can, okay, I'm going to go for a walk Mm -hmm. 10 minutes you know, and then I'm going to go for a walk for 20 minutes, Mm -hmm. you know, and then I'm going to maybe be outside for half an hour, you know, and you can pace yourself and just do things in smaller, smaller goals because it's so much easier and more achievable to set these small goals that you can, you know, eventually get up to rather than you start from here and you want to get all the way up to there in one go. And then just to really quickly touch upon it, just just know that like if you're sitting on an emotion, know that emotions are temporary. You know what I mean? They come and they go, you know what I mean? Sometimes they're 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 bigger and sometimes they're smaller. But you know, like um acknowledge that that feeling and acknowledge that emotion. And um if it's something that is continuing to just harp on you, you know, seek help or like talk to a friend, um, you know, find a support group, you know what I mean, things of that nature. There are resources out there. That you can that you can access. Um, some some of them are free. Some of them are through insurance um, or whatnot, out of pocket. But you can there are they are available. Like um, you know, when I was going through it, I didn't know anything was available. You know, what I mean, I didn't know I had access to anything. Even if you didn't have insurance, like I did, if you had, or if you're on Medi-Cal or whatever, you know what I mean. Yeah. Well, no, if you're a student, you also get that covered too, right? I think so. Yeah. I think they have resources. Resources if you're a student at your college, if you're in college, or even at high school. It depends. Yeah, it depends. So, um, so unfortunately, you know, our healthcare system is really, really, really complicated, and that makes it confusing as far as you know how to search for a therapist. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, once you find one, how do you pay for it? Because therapy is not cheap, and it's not something that you are going to do only one time. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it can be free. Um, sometimes it's also mandatory. Yeah. Uh, so, it, you know, it, it really depends on the circumstance. So, you know, going back to if you're a student. Mm-hmm. Um, so a lot of schools, including, you know, uh, higher ed, like universities, will require that you have some kind of insurance as a student at that school. Mm-hmm. Sometimes the school will, you know, have you buy into the school mm-hmm. insurance. Um, sometimes the school, oh, well, the school should also allow you to waive out if you have coverage through someone else, like your parents, if you're a dependent of someone. So the current law is if you are, you know, below 26 years old, you know, 25, up to, no, if you're up to 26 years old, you can have coverage through your parents. Yeah. Um, if you are a certain income, if you meet a certain poverty level, you can qualify for Medicaid. In California, we call that Medi-Cal. Wow. And every county has its own Medi-Cal program, mm-hmm. so you have to know what your county does. And so we're in what LA County. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. So um, so whether or not your insurance is a form of Medicaid, like Medi-Cal, yeah. or um, a private insurer, you know, there's so many, like Aetna, yeah. Blue Cross, United, United Kaiser, United. Uh, Molina, so it, you have to know what your insurance is. Yeah. If you don't have insurance, um, we need to figure out how to how to how to go about doing that. So a lot of times, people who don't have insurance, um, that's one of the biggest barriers, right? Mm-hmm. Is how to pay for it. Because even if you do find a therapist, how do you pay for it? So this is something that some therapists are willing to work out on a one-on-one basis. There are certain kinds of treatment centers that you can work things out on a one-on-one basis. And again, if you qualify for Medi-Cal, yeah. certain um, services will be qualified, uh, uh, will be covered by Medi-Cal, and you will not pay anything out of pocket provided that you meet that poverty level. 
So you have to really know what your options are. And that's, it's, you know, there's nowhere on the internet that tells you this is your step-by-step -step guide. Mm -hmm. yeah. So first of all, you have to know, do you have insurance? If mm -hmm. so, what kind of insurance? Now, when you figure out what kind of insurance you have, assuming that you have some type of insurance, is now you have to figure out what is the number that I call to get behavioral health services. Mm -hmm. Because the, it's gonna be a different number or a different way to access versus you know medical like health coverage. Mm -hmm. oh. Like you know, seeing your doctors, like for, um, for primary care, your annuals, your checkups, gynecologist, yeah. OB, whatever. Um, so those are pediatricians, those are different, that's a different line. So now you mm -hmm. have to call something else. So you figure out behavioral health, and then you ask them, what is the process for me to see a therapist? Oh. And they'll tell you what that process is. Sometimes they'll have you do a consultation first. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they'll have you um, do a larger evaluation first. It depends on what your insurer does, whether, mm -hmm. you know, no matter if it's Medi-Cal or a private insurer. So it's, it's complicated, but um, you have to first start with, you know, knowing what your coverage is because yeah. ultimately you want something that you're going to sustain mm -hmm. for a potentially long time because you don't want to limit yourself necessarily to just one or two visits. Mm -hmm. But that's, you as know, many as, you, as, you as many as you need, you know, and you have to be able to figure out, well, if my insurance only covers this many visits, you know, how much can I afford on my own or, you know, as a supplemental. So. And also, if you, if you feel like if that you are in need of getting uh, behavioral, you know, behavioral health or mental health services, um, do whatever it takes. You go the extra mile. It's worth it. Um, find somebody that, that understands your process or what you're going through. Um, you know what I mean? Like a lot of therapists work on a sliding scale if you're not making enough money or want to don't let that stop you because it's so important that you'll have, you know, like if you can go through this process and recover from whatever that ails you, you'll be, you'll live a happier, a happier life. You know what I mean? So I do want to say one last thing about that, but if you do have an emergency where you feel like you want to hurt yourself or you may want to hurt other people, you know, and this is real, you know, um, we have to say is we, it's very important that important that you go to the emergency room right away. Yeah. So, I mean, that's that's great. I'm glad you guys are um, sharing this information uh, for our viewers out there, which thank you, by the way, um, and I have I have our live stream on our phone. Mm -hmm. So uh, I just want to say uh, a quick thank you to everyone who's actually attending our live stream. Thank you guys so much. Mm -hmm. um, I hope all the information that we've been saying so far has been pretty helpful to you. Um, we're going to continue to kind of talk about different uh, avenues of where we can get help, uh, but I do kind of want to open up just a little bit of like some questions that you guys feel like we didn't cover yet that you guys want to know. So just leave your questions and I'll probably, I'll try to scroll through them and I'll try to pick some out. But in the meantime, we're just going to uh, talk about different ways where we can get help. So like, are there any, is there like a website or any organizations that you guys personally recommend to start off to try to find help? Yes. Other, other, other than figuring out what your insurance plan is. So that's tough is because different therapists are covered by different insurance plans. Oh. So, you know, just because you are really into a therapist doesn't mean that they take your insurance. I and see. that's what is another layer of complication. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, a lot of times, you know, we, we first ask is, how do you know who's the right fit therapist? I've heard, you know, I've heard that the first one may not always be the right fit. It's true. And you have to go shopping for it. You do. You do, because remember, it's a relationship, and this is a person who you're telling your deepest, darkest, most painful, shameful mm -hmm. secrets, you know? And just because, you know, a, a therapist isn't the right fit for you, I mean, they're probably the right fit for somebody else, you know? It's just, it's a relationship, mm -hmm. and it's not something personal. It's just something that you have to come into knowing that, okay, this therapist, first of all, let's say you're someone who identifies as LGBTQ mm -hmm. and you want to talk to a therapist about LGBTQ issues. Well, you want to know, you want to first go to a therapist that is well-versed in speaking to people who have, you know, uh, issues regarding like LGBTQ things, mm -hmm. right? And so that's the first thing, but just because that therapist is well-versed in those things doesn't mean that it's a great fit because you have to still 
have that relationship and conversation with that person. Right. Mm -hmm. And so oftentimes what I'll do is like, um, you know, I'll ask around is, um, so I speak with my friends openly uh, mm -hmm. about like mental health and I'll ask like, hey, do you know a therapist who um, knows about these things or is really great at these things? And so, you know, we'll kind of ask around and be like, okay, this person we think, you know, we have a few of these people and I'll look and see, okay, this is covered by my insurance, you know, kind of play around. And so you have to do a little research, but also figure out what your current situation is, like financially, like insurance wise, mm -hmm. you know, if those are things that are of concern to you. So if you have a particular insurance and you know you have a private insurance, say, um, what you can do, usually on the back of the car, there is um, mental health um, services or mental health benefits telephone number. Yeah. Call that number and then ask them for a list of therapists that, um, you know, that they have. And then um, just I would say just bet them over the phone or interview them and see, you know, like, do you, you know, this is what I'm going through. Is this something that you're, you know, like you're familiar with, you know, before I decide to sit down and choose one for what I'm going through, then, you know, then you can bet them over the phone. You know what I mean? So then like, what if um, there are those out there that are on a budget and um, they can't afford insurance is um, uh, where can they find free services? You can go to like okay, you can you can Google therapists, okay. right? A lot of um, therapists have private practices. You go to Psychology Today, mm -hmm. um, things of that nature. Just Google it, yeah. and then um, just uh, call them over the phone. And say, hey, you know, like I I'm dealing with this. You know, what I mean, I I can't afford private insurance. You work on a sliding scale. Okay. I believe on Psychology Today, it'll say if they accept insurance, if they work on a sliding scale. Like I think it tells you what kind of um, payments they they accept. Yeah. Um, but I'm not 100 percent sure. So. Um, you can always ask them over the phone. Yeah. Um, a lot of therapists, um, you know, do do that type of service, and a lot of them don't. But you're going to have to try to find. So, them. what what is a sliding scale? What does that mean? Depending on how much you make, um, they base oh. off they base your your per session fee based on how much you oh, make I see. or how much okay. you can I typically afford. You know, it just really just depends. Oh, yeah. And I would also, you know, in case you do speak with a therapist who you like, but for whatever reason can't see, you could ask them, well, do you know someone? Can you refer me to someone mm -hmm. who may Great, be yeah. able to um, help me in the ways that I can? Right. You know, because I therapists, just because they can't treat you, doesn't mean like, oh, well, then nobody's gonna treat you. Like, no, they're, <laughs> they wanna help you too. Yeah. So, you know, ask them if they know anyone yeah. who might be able to help you. So then like, what if you've been therapist shopping for a few times now? Let's say you've gone to like five different therapists. I mean, and you know, as as a person, you know, emotionally, right? Like, you can only handle so much rejection. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, what if um, you start feeling discouraged that maybe you'll never find the right therapist that you need? Um, what would you say to those people out there that are experiencing that? I would say keep going, keep trying. You know what I mean? Because if the one thing that you can do is help yourself um, dealing with a with trauma or a men or mental health issue, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? That that is probably the best thing that you can do for yourself. You know what I mean? Um, keeping whatever you have buried deep down inside is never healthy, mm -hmm. and it always comes up in, in other in other ways. Like you know a nervous mean? breakdown. Yeah, nervous <laughs> breakdown, you know, like, you know, abusing substances, overeating, it, it always does that, you know what I mean? Yeah. Isolation, you know? So I, I would say keep going. Um, don't allow whatever is eating you eating you up alive to take you down. You know what I mean? Just keep trying, keep trying. Okay, okay. Cool. All right, so I'm gonna kind of scroll through a little bit and we'll see if anyone has any questions so far. So one question by Carl Sequing. Sorry if I uh, butchered your, hey, your username. Um, uh, how do I keep faith in people and the help they give? I'm always fearful in my mind will convince me that the kindness I receive is insincere, even though I don't want to think that way. Mm. I think that's really hard um, to assess intention, mm -hmm. right? Is because oftentimes, you know, what we really see is what's on the outside and it's hard to, it can be hard to gauge intent. Like, is this person sincere? Is this person doing this because they want to get something out of me? Um, I think part of it is again is how do you how do you learn that? I think it's it's learning from your mistakes of of what are some of the things that make you distrust certain types of people mm -hmm. and what are some of the things that the people you do trust have and how do you keep searching for those 
characteristics in people because you shouldn't trust everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, um, everybody's got their own lives, and I don't. I'm not going to say that people are just inherently selfish, but you know, people have their own things, and they're not necessarily thinking of you if they somehow offend you. Mm -hmm. You know, they may not have been in their mind like thinking about that. So I think you know, you have to think about you know, how do I find people who are trustworthy? And part of it is also being mindful is, you know, when somebody does something that you like, okay, wow, I like that. That, that was a really cool thing that person did. And checking in with yourself. And then if somebody does something that you don't like, and you kind of just keep a mental tally, like, wow, it, when this person did this to me, I felt this, and then I felt this, and, the, you know, like it was never addressed, and I felt this. Those are reasons for maybe why that relationship is not a healthy one. Yeah. And maybe don't continue to pursue that. Thank you. You know, bye. Great. You know, have a great life. Or I don't know. I hope it ends that way, but it doesn't often, you know, <laughs> right. yeah. you know, and just move on. And that's okay because some relationships are not meant to last forever. Yeah. yeah. Uh, real quick. I think we just got offline on Instagram. Are we back live? Are we back Second online? Connection. Yeah. I can I can I can probably push it on here if that works. Are we are we back on? We're back on. Yep. We're back on. All right. Um, so uh, I guess uh, to recap for those on Instagram Live that kind of missed out on it, um, we were talking about um, the mindfulness and that um, uh, that it may not necessarily be the case. So you kind of left off on that kind of note and. Um, you said some magical words after that. Oh, I don't know if you quite and, remember, but well, I think it, it was about having it was about having faith. And how can I continue to have yeah. faith in other people mm -hmm. without um, without thinking that their intentions are like you know underlining like ill will? Do you know what I mean? And I'm just gonna play like because um, Mario talked about like I um, I feel like one side of the spectrum, but I'm just gonna play devil's advocate on, on, on another side because a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of issues stem from self. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So a lot of uh, well most. Do. but you know so like let's say like for some reason like we don't have faith in people yeah. sometimes it's because our own actions are sometimes not trustworthy yeah. great point you know great what I mean point. yeah and it's like okay so like is it because is it is it is the reason why I don't trust people is because maybe I'm not trustworthy so it kind of begs, begs the question and I've learned this in my past and in, in, in my own journey it's like you know if I want to build trust or if I want to have trust in other people I must do trustworthy things, mm -hmm. you know, like if I want to be, if I want to have friends, I have to do friendly things. Yeah. If I want to be, you know, to walk with integrity, I have to do things, I have to take actions that, that, that show that I walk with integrity. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I don't know. I was going to say integral things, but that's kind of weird. <laughs> I don't know, that's weird, you know, but, but. I like doing math. I know, right? I'm doing integral. Yeah, so, <laughs> so it's, it's one of those things. It's like, it's almost like, let's put up a marriage for ourselves, for ourselves and say like, okay. You know, like, am I a trustworthy person? Am I a faithful person? Am I an honest person? You know what I mean? And how can I how can I portray that in all the things I do mm -hmm. so that I no longer have to have that paranoia of other people, um, you know, like, of, of, of what your intentions for me might be. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's such a great point, like, this idea of projection. You know, like, we, like, you project your own fears onto other people. Mm -hmm. And that happens sometimes, too, and you have to be aware of that. And... I think it's very, very important, you're right, is, again, to be mindful and look in the mirror and be like, okay, am I trustworthy? And let's say you don't believe you're trustworthy, okay? Mm -hmm. Do you want to be a trustworthy person? Right. Yes. You know, what steps do you, you know, do to become a trustworthy person? Okay, be a trust, be a person who, who commits, who does what they say. Right. Yeah. All right, so um, I basically have one last question to ask you guys. Um, because uh, I actually kind of lost all the questions on, on our live feed, but it, it like I, I read a few things that kind of sparked a question in me, and um, and I think it's something that we actually haven't really touched upon in our discussions. And for those who are in the LGBTQI plus community, um, I know that uh, growing up um, in in any form of a household, right, uh, you 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 feel a lot of guilt and you, you feel very troubled by like who you're attracted to and it's and it's something that is not super relatable because majority of the people around you are more like heterosexual right where they, they like the opposite sex never the same sex or never both right mm -hmm. and it's 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 hard to relate to something like that so um 
you know, for the kids who are dealing with trying to find their own identity mm -hmm. and, um, and for them to be comfortable in their own skin, that they like whoever they like, um, like what, what kind of advice would you guys be able to share with them? <laughs> I, think, I think part of it is having a community. Okay. Like this is not something that anybody should have to go through alone. And you shouldn't because when when everybody in society tells you that what you are that you know that that's something that you can't help your sexuality your, you know uh, the gender that you affiliate with or you believe that you are mm -hmm. is 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 not like congruent with your own beliefs it's it's really easy to just isolate yourself and just turn off but that's the one thing that you can't do you have to seek a community that understands you. You have to mm -hmm. seek other people who have been through it because you can't do it alone. Right. You have to ask them and you have to have these relationships, these conversations with people who have been there, done that, and can help find and uh, not find, direct you and like help you with the resources. And just sometimes it just helps to know that you're not the only one who's been through it. Mm -hmm. You know? Well, you know, like, um, I guess, like, you know, and I'll be, I'm going to be sharing my story, you know, like in, you know, in the, in the documentary, you know what I mean? But it, I feel like um, being LGBTQ in, in, the, in, in our community, as well as being in the Asian community, for me, was, was, I don't know, like it was, it was really, really hard. It was really, really tough. And I wish I knew, I wish, you know, a documentary like this existed, or I wish that, you know, like somebody, um, you know, was on YouTube or whatever, you know, if people yeah. like to tell me that, yeah. That you know there are resources available. You know there are places that people like me could could go to to be able to seek help, seek advice. Um, and it, let's say you know a lot of a lot of us, a lot of us, they get kicked, we get kicked out of our house, our houses. You know, our households. We don't have a place to live. You know, there's places that you can stay at. There's places. There's resources. There's people that will reach out their hands to help you. You know what I mean? So don't give up. Um, you know, pick up, pick yourself up by the bootstraps, and and um, and seek out that help. Mm -hmm. Because once once we let's say once we like start exploring exploring that side of us, and for some reason our family or our friends or whatever just like it shuts us, shuts us down, and we have nothing. We have no sense of community, no sense of no sense sense of family, no sense of you know anything. Once that happens, we're left to our own devices. And if we, we aren't prepared, you know what I mean, we, we, it, it may put us in a very, very tough spot. So I feel like um, it, when you're in college, you're a bit more open to reaching out to find help, or you're actually a lot more open about um, your own sexuality, right? So mm -hmm. like, um, what about for those uh, people that are in middle school and in high school where it's less likely that they may want to express that side of themselves. And like, um, I guess in that form, like how would they be able to seek help? Because I feel like, because, because my older sibling is, is on the spectrum. And, um, and uh, for the longest time, my, uh, my, my older sibling has always placed a lot of pressure on themselves. Mm -hmm. And um, because of the, the guilt and feeling like, oh, I'm not normal, I don't like necessarily the, the opposite sex, mm. uh, but I, I identify myself in this particular way. And um, it was emotions and thoughts that um, they couldn't necessarily process. And so um, it went until, until college when they started mm -hmm. to be exposed to different mindsets and they're more open about it. So it's just like for those that are really struggling in high school, like what is an outlet for them to see help? Well, what stops, okay, so what stops us from taking uh, positive um, action? One is lack of resources and fear. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if we're afraid, we're gonna try to do whatever makes us feel, feel better, especially mm -hmm. if we don't know Especially if we don't know that there's 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 resources to help you. Yeah. If somebody's in middle school, like when I started when I started exploring uh, my sexual or having having um having feelings towards the same sex, yeah. I had nothing. Okay, oh, so okay. I had nobody to talk to. Yeah. I was afraid. You know what I mean? So yeah. this is you put you in a spot where you're like, okay, so what do you do? You know what I mean? Can we can we convince our parents to 
to take us to therapy. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, maybe I could pick up the phone yeah. and then call my, 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 um, the, the closest LGBTQ center. Yeah. You know what I mean? See if there's a way that they can, that I can talk to somebody. You know what I mean? Um, do, I don't know, like in that situation, it's, it's extremely, extremely tough to ask for help, yeah. especially if you don't want to take that step. Right. Um, I mean, I think, you know, even like bringing up therapy with your parents as a, as a young person mm -hmm. is really scary because, mm -hmm. you know, you're worried that one, well, your parents will be like, you don't need therapy. You're just, you know, you're just weak, mm -hmm. right. you know, or they'll ask you why you need the therapy. Mm -hmm. it's, which is something, you know, like you don't want to share with them, especially if it's, you know, especially if you're worried that they're going to be very bad consequences for you sharing why you want to go to therapy. Yeah. And I think also we have to be real that some, some, you know, cultures and some families will say, oh, well, you think you are queer or gay or lesbian or trans or whatever, then you need to go to conversion therapy. Mm -hmm. which is not the right way to go. And that's not, that's not the right kind of therapy that you need yeah. as someone who identifies as LGBTQIA+. You know, that is not what you need. And so I think, you know, when you're a young, a very young person that lives with your parents and you don't have access to resources that adults do, mm -hmm. you know, you can start at school, a lot of school. I mean, schools should have some kind of counselor, some kind of school psychologist. Mm -hmm. Right, where you can at least start having this conversation to just feel like, okay, what I'm going through is not abnormal. Yeah. You know, it's just different. It's not the usual, but it doesn't make it bad. It's just different. And I, and, and I think more and more, and also now, like, um, I'm not sure about middle schools, but I know that high schools are, they have like a, you know, gay straight alliance, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? They do, they do. Um, yeah. So, I would say seek out the resource. Um, you know, it's it's better than than isolating and mm -hmm. and beating yourself up. And you know, what I mean, like I would, you know, I would just say like God made you that way. You know, made us this way. And and you know, like you gotta love yourself. You know, what I mean, like yeah. don't hide from yourself, don't run from yourself. Love yourself, accept yourself, be who you were meant to be. And mm -hmm. You know, and shine bright like a diamond. Oh, I love that. I love that. I mean, that, that's great. I mean, you guys answered the question beautifully. And I hope that um, it helps all of you guys out there. Um, and hopefully that we'll have another live show joining us. Uh, she's going to wrap up now. And uh, I just want to say thank you guys for stay, like for watching our live stream. Stay tuned or being involved in it by asking us questions or agreeing with the things that we're saying or disagreeing with the things that we're saying. Um, we just we just want to make this project happen. So things I never said film is basically a documentary that follows five people on their own mental health journey. And we would like to make that project happen. And if you would love to support our cause, please check our in, our Indiegogo page, and uh, you can support us from there. So uh, I guess we'll just end the night here. Yeah. yeah. You guys yeah. Cool. Thank yeah. you guys, everyone. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Be this sure. Sponsored by Egg. Yeah. <laughs> by Egg and, and by Boba and, and, and everything. And tacos. tacos. And tacos, yes. Yeah. So I'll be sure Sriracha. to check out our Indiegogo page. All right, guys? Bye. 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 Thank Bye. you. Hi. Hi, Facebook Live. Oh, we're still live on Facebook. Hello. <laughs> Thank you Are so we? much. I think so, yeah. I think so. Oh, you can touch me. 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 Oh, you can